Hello Cherries fans and welcome to an early Premier League prediction show here on Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and also give us a like today. We say early Premier League predictions, mate. It's only three and a bit weeks away. Absolutely flies by, doesn't it? Absolutely mm. flies by. I can't wait for it now, mate. So we're sat here in Sandbanks today at Lazy Jack's, located on Sandbanks Peninsula. This place offers a, a modern British menu centred around fantastic locally sourced seafood, along with some contemporary takes on global dishes as well. If you come in here for a, a drink or a meal, then certainly pop by. Tom, it's a, it's a Premier League preview. It'd be handy to have a guest, I suppose, that's got experience of yeah. management in the Premier League and dealing with Premier League players. Have you got any ideas? Um, oh, I don't know. What are you thinking of? I'm thinking of this gentleman here. Harry Redknapp's with us. Harry, how are you? How doing? Are you? Okay, guys. Yeah, good. Very good. Uh, nice Quite to see you, Harry. Now. How are you keeping? All good, yeah. Yeah, I've just been playing golf this morning. Got out nice and early. For a change. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, nice morning. Are you missing the football? Yeah, I do. But I go and watch Bournemouth every week. You know, I enjoy that. I sort of poodle along there. Leave home about up past two. Get in the ground and leave usually five minutes from the end. Miss the tra traffic get home and watch the up past five game on TV. So yeah, it's football, football, football yeah. still. What was pre-season like though, as a manager? What was it like kind of Different. with the, was it, did you enjoy it? That Loved kind of, it. did you? Oh yeah, but the difference in pre-seasons from when I started playing yeah, I to nowadays is it's a different world. Yeah. I mean, we used to turn up for pre-season. Let's say, you know, I was at West Ham. I left school at 15, signed for West Ham. We'd all get on the coach at the training ground, Chabberley. There'd be 50 odd players on there standing up, sitting on the floor, the kids all sitting on the floor, us apprentices, and, and we'd all head to Epping Forest. Right. And we get in the forest, right, and we get off the coach. We didn't stretch. We didn't know what a stretching exercise was. And the manager would say, OK, welcome back. We'll start today, blah, blah, blah. Off you go, and you start running up the Ep 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 through Epping Forest. And you'd run, and you'd run, and you'd run. It was just unbelievable. Just then you'd walk, have a walk, then you'd walk. And like we're in there one day, we're running around it in forest, and Bobby's Bobby Moore, you know, the greatest captain in English history. Bobby and a fellow called Brian Deere, who was a striker, they're not great runners, as it happened, you know. And suddenly we're flogging our way up this big hill. It's called Mott Hill. It was like that. We'd already done about three, and, we're, and it's about eighty degrees, and we've. Suddenly the milk float comes past and there's Bobby sitting on the front of the milk float. He's got the milkman's hat on and there's Brian Deere sitting with him, squeezed him, and they come on you lot, get your leg. There's, I mean, they're drinking a pint of, they used to sell orange juice in them days, the milkman. Yeah. They got an orange juice or, and one had a bottle of milk, you know. <laughs> Jumped off about 300 yards from 200 yards from the finish and joined in halfway. Not, because they knew if he was up the front, the manager would know saying had gone, been Hello. dodgy, you know. But, very, very different the training. We used to run, come back and run and run and run, but still. They still like, do a bit of that. Yeah, not like we did. But and, yeah. and when I managed Bournemouth, we'd go around Catherine's Hill. Yeah, yeah. We'd go up St. Catherine's Hill and we'd run and run and run. And like up and down their meals, and that was our preset. You got so fit, it was crazy. Yeah. We were we were watching a video on AFCB TV, and they got all the players. They had to do four laps, so it's uh, sixteen hundred meters, so best part of a mile, and they had to do it in five minutes thirty-five seconds. And you saw some of the players like Adam Smith. My he's God, he's been keeping definitely. himself. He's been yeah. keeping himself fit, and he absolutely smashed it. There are other players, Emmy Marcondes. <laughs> Someone who was on the fringe of the squad last year, played a few games, scored, you know, scored whenever he played, it seemed. He was really fit as well. Lloyd Kelly, who we thought was probably the fittest player in the squad, he, he really be. struggled, but he yeah. really struggled. But were there any players back in your time that were absolutely blowing when they came, like when they came back? From oh, yeah, summer? lots of them. I mean, as I say, it was, you had a lot of characters back in them days. You know, John Bond, you know, John managed Bournemouth, didn't he? John Bond was a, one of, he was a fantastic player, John Bond, at West Ham. You know, played right back. Used to call him Muffin. He had a kick like a mule. He would hit 50-yard crossfield passes, Bondy, to the outside left feet, and not without him moving an inch. Yeah. He, he was incredible. But he hated running. You know, I remember one day again, he's in, he's in, in the back of the mint because we used to stop, and we had this one run to finish on. It was about three miles. It was a place called uh, Grange. It was actually called Grange Hill, or Grange Farm. Sorry, Grange Farm, and. Bondy got in the boot of the coach, left the back of the coach slightly open because it was going around to pick us all up at the other end. 
he was knackered, he couldn't run. And one of the lads, when he thanked Peter Braver, who was a pl slammed the boots shut on him <laughs> and locked him in there. And he panicked. Can you imagine him locked in there? Oh my God, it was left him in there all the way till they got back to the training ground. He was in a real state. But lots of characters, lots of different types of trainers. You know, Paolo Di Canio was an incredible athlete, incredible condition. Then you had Razor Ruddock, didn't you? It was yeah, the complete opposite. <laughs> I mean, so it takes all sorts. But some lads are great athletes, great runners. They run all day pre-season, then when the matches start, they don't run so far. Yeah, it's just, yeah. you want them to be just to get ready for the season and, and be ready to go. Yeah. So what about Scott Parker then? Because you had him as a player yeah. for, for a season, did you at Spurs? Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was he like as a player? Good player, yeah. very yeah. good yeah. player. Good did, player, Scott. Did you see the management potential in him at that stage? Are there certain um, players you get a uh, sort of gauge of, oh, actually, no, they he was quite right. very quiet, you know, very yeah. quiet boy. I thought he was very quiet, but good pro, good mm. trainer, good player. Good lad, yeah, no reason he wouldn't be a manager, he ain't got to be noisy or But no, he was quiet, I couldn't sit here and say, yeah, for sure, I thought Scott would yeah. go into that. Um, but, he's, you know, he, he has and he's done very well. He had a tough midfielder to get into, was that when you had Modric? And yeah, Lander but Scott, he played every game. Did he? Oh, yeah, I bought him. See, he always seemed like he was like a reliable Oh, player. yeah, he was a good player for me, yeah, Scott yeah. Parker. Very, very good player. And in terms of last season for AFC Bournemouth, how, how did you gauge it? Because we had we had a really good start of the season. Then there were a few few matches against teams, I don't want to sound condescending, but Hull, mm. Blackpool at home springs to mind, Peterborough, teams we really struggled against. But when we played yeah. the top six, we did all right. It was a, it was a strange season. Yeah, but um, always for me at the start of the year, they were, I, I made them favourites to, to win the league. Yeah. I mean, I'm a bet, I like a bet and I bet Bournemouth last year. Yeah. I really fancied them strong. I thought the squad was fantastic, you know. Um, and then Gary Cahill coming in, I thought was a, mm. a master, a great signing because he was a top professional. I thought he'd do a great job, and he, I thought he did, you know. And then obviously the, the other lad came in from Liverpool and did a great job. But no, I liked the, the squad was good. It was strong, um, and yeah, to get promoted, they couldn't do any more. They could have won it, but to finish second was uh, was still a great achievement. Yeah, job done, man. We haven't really made any, we were just chatting off air. Yeah. Our business that we've done is very much under the radar. Mm. We've got uh, Rothwell in from, from Blackburn. Mm, it, uh, I don't know much about him, they tell me he's a good player. Yeah. yeah, and also... And Fredericks. And Fredericks as yeah, well. I had Ryan Fredericks as a kid at, at Tottenham. Yeah. Um, lightning quick he was back in them days. I didn't know if he was a, he was a winger. Then he got converted to, I think he's a wing back. Right. Yeah, that'd be you interesting. Know, I, I signed Matty Taylor when I was at Portsmouth mm. from Luton. And Matt, he was a left, he was a wing back. He wasn't a great left back in a four. He wasn't a great left winger. winger. Right. He lacked that little, but he was a wing back. He'd get up and down and, you know, and I, I see Ryan Fredericks the same. You know, he's got that ability to run up and down that right side all day. If he's going to play that way, yeah, it'd be it'd be an ideal wing back. But maybe that is giving us that option of going to wing back system if we if he wants to. Yeah, maybe that's that sort of sign and makes. Then you got Adam sense. Smith. Adam Smith is still for yeah. me is a fantastic right back. I still oh, he's brilliant. Yeah. Have your life on him, wouldn't you? And Zamora had a great season at left back, didn't yeah. he? He was he mm. just come through. Oh, unbelievable. So yeah, down that left side, they he were was, they were dangerous. Yeah, the two boys on the left were ripped teams to pieces, especially early season, yeah. didn't they? When they played together. They were like they an unknown, weren't big they? Big understanding. Yeah, yeah. No one knew who they were, where they'd come from suddenly. And they were they were absolutely amazing. Yeah. How, how important is it for you as a manager, you know, when you're a manager, to have a decent academy? Because obviously Bournemouth are now starting to redevelop that ground at Camford Magna. Um, they got this you know, facility that could be amazing. I mean, the pictures, like the computer-generated drawings of what they're trying to achieve. They're trying to sort of do what Southampton have done. Um, but how important, because like Jordan Zamora, Jaden Anthony, Gav Kilkenny, Mark Travers have all come through. How important is it, you know, oh, to have a decent academy? Massively important, you know. You want to produce kids that come out of the youth team, there's nothing like it, you know. I was, so I, I went back to West End, the first thing I wanted to do was to get the academy going. And not because we decided to do that, you, we, you've got to be lucky, you've got to be lucky. We end up with six kids coming through the door within two years or went on to win everything there was to win in football. Yeah. You know, where'd you, but you don't get that again. It ain't happened since, it probably never happened again. It's a miracle. Yeah. And then Man United did the same with their six kids that they had, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so you need a bit of luck, but you do, need to, you do need to try to work on it and get kids in, you know. There's nothing like producing your own players. But as a manager, you've got to take interest in the kids. You've got to take an interest. Ain't no good doing lip service to, we've got an academy. 
it all comes from the top. The manager is the man who drives that. He's got to show an interest in them kids. He has to go and watch youth games. He has to be over there watching them kids play. Every Saturday of my life that I managed at West Ham, I go and watch the kids play in the morning at Chabra Leaf when we were at home. And then I watched the first half, 15 minutes of the second half, jump in my car, Upton Park for the first team game. When I played at West Ham, I played in the FA Youth Cup winning team. And our manager, Ron Green, who was the best football coach I've ever met by a million miles, Ron came to watch the youth team play in the semi-final of the FA Youth Cup when we played Wolves and didn't go with the first team that day. He travelled with a youth team for a semi-final FA Youth Cup game at Molyneux on a Saturday because he wanted a, he knew the future of the club yeah. because West Ham just produced player after, everyone yeah, came out of the youth yeah. team. Bobby Moore, Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters, all came from the youth team. Trevor Brook and Frank Lampard, they were youth team players. Yeah. They're all kids that came through the youth policy. And that was where the, and, and so if you're going to do it, you've got to show an interest. The coaches have got to be there. They've got to be over there watching the kids. First team coaches have got to be interested. You've got to do that. And then you'll show parents that you're interested. Yeah. They see, oh, the manager was here today, he must have, you know, he's watching the kids play. It's great for the, everybody. Yeah. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. It doesn't happen enough nowadays. No, not, too many, not too many managers take enough interest in the kids. Mm. I mean, Brentford have. They don't have an academy anymore, do, no. do they? Yeah, so they've like scrapped their academy and they've got a B side. Yeah, and it's really interesting to see the different approaches. But when you see that we can sell on players like Sam Surridge for four or five million, yeah. players that had barely even played in the championship for us at that point in time, then you know it's good business to develop yeah. those players. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. but work it. Try to produce some players that are going to be great players Absolutely. for this club. Go yeah. on and be, be top top players. Yeah, you know there are players around. So Adam Lallana was here, wasn't he? Is yeah, he? yeah, exactly. You know, don't let Southampton nick them. No, no. Other clubs come and nick the kids. No, we want to. Yeah, we want to be able to develop our yeah, own. So we've got our own kids. They, they want to stay. They want to play with Bournemouth. This is their team. Yeah. As a kid now, I think in the U, in the under 16s I, mean, I don't know if he's gone or he's going or someone wants him. I don't know. But they've had one or two kids here recently that yeah. other clubs have nicked. Nicked, yeah, we need to mm. yeah, we need to produce our own and use them, like you say. So I think, yeah, there's you know, there's a mixture of like raising the youth players, yeah. um, bringing in loan signings, bringing in cheap signings, that seems seemingly how it's going to be. We've got a couple through the door. Um, we need to sign some more, but it yeah, seems like Parker does his business very quietly. Um, whereas under Eddie, there were all these rumours, weren't there, online, you know, sometime like months uh, yeah. before we actually got them. I remember Chris Meppen was rumoured about a year before we actually got him. Yeah. But um, have you ever been close to a signing and then you know been you know sort of gazumped to the last minute with someone oh, else? Cross players, him? you know. Even my time at Bournemouth, I was going. To, I, I went to Runcorn one Tuesday night in the middle of winter, the coldest night of the year. Pitch was like a skating rink, and Stuart Morgan, who was my chief scout, told me about a boy at Runcorn called Ian Wown. And I went to run call that Tuesday night, liked him, left sider, left footer, had a left foot like a magic wand. And we're going to sign him, agreed the fee with the, with the, uh, with the chairman of the club, I think it was £40,000. Uh, and he was due to come the next day to sign with his dad. His dad was an ex-pro and his dad had to work and couldn't come. So we got a phone call that night, went that afternoon and said, look, his dad's got to work. He really wants to be there when he signs his pro contract. Um, He'll come, they'll be here in the morning. But it, it came out that night in the paper, local paper, he was supposed to be coming today, but he's going to come tomorrow. It was on teletext back in them days. Yes. Ian Wohan would travel to Bournemouth tomorrow at a sign for Bournemouth. Brian Clough was in his office. One, I sat in here, funny enough, when we told him, I sat right here when um, the, the, the Alan Hill, who was the goalkeeper, it was the coach at Notts Forest with Brian Clough. And wherever Clough he went, Alan Hill was part of his backup team. Right. You know, that was, that was, he was, he went it, and Alan Hill told me the story. So we were sitting in the office, watching TV, he said at five o'clock, just get ready to go home. And we got the telly on a cluff, he said, who's that guy into Bournemouth? Wone, Ian Wone from Runcorn. Don't know, never heard of him. He said, they do well with non-league players, Bournemouth. We had Sean Till, we had people like, you know, we had one or two, we had a little group of a Paul Morell, who was a good player yeah, here, yeah, Cape and Wayne, but lots of them. Uh, he said, they don't make many mistakes when they sign non-league players, Bournemouth. He said, ring, ring up them. So the, Ronnie Fenton said, so I know the manager at Runcorn. Uh, he said, I'll give him a ring. So he rang him. He says, this, what's this boy like? Uh, Wone, going to Bournemouth. He said, he's too good for Bournemouth. He said, is he? Yeah. He said, 
real player. He said, has he signed you? He said, no, he's going tomorrow to sign. He said, what's the fee? He said, 40 grand. Cluffy went, tell him we give him 80. And he gave him 80 grand. He said, come in here. And I got a phone call that night, 11 o'clock at night. I just got gone to bed. He's, Harry just had some bad news. He's going to Knott's Forest. And that was all because it was on telly that Yeah, night, and so. his dad had to work, yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah. Wow. and he, he had a great career yeah. at Forest. Yeah. Been a fantastic player. Brilliant. Yeah, all right, so up. what we're doing for our, for our viewers that are watching now, you all know what a tier list is. So we've got five different um, categories here, Harry. Whiz through some predictions for the, the Premier League. Yeah, so we got our title contenders. I think we all know who, who, the, who those two probably are. The five teams that are going to be also in Europe, two Champions League, two Europa, one conference. Then you've got your mid-table, relegation scrap. Um, Talk to me about title contenders. Is it going to be the same oh, two yeah. clubs again? Yeah. Can you see anyone else getting Only close? Only Tottenham. They've made some good business, Only they? Tottenham. Mm. Yeah. I think Tottenham are going to be the biggest improvers. Wow. I can yep. see Tottenham going, running City and Liverpool. Liverpool close. Yeah. Uh, for second. I, I really do think they've got a good squad this year. Tottenham yeah. But do you think it's going to be Man City, Liverpool and I then maybe Man Spurs? I think Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to make that fourth? Chelsea. Chelsea. You still, yeah, Sterling signing as well. And also Chelsea. Nathan Ake as well. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. Chelsea. Great move for Aki, isn't it? What a great move yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, Back to Chelsea. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to be playing at the top. I think yeah, he's yeah. Top, one of the best players I've seen. Yeah, good player. Very good player. Now, obviously, we've got a close connection with Eddie Howe. I've got to say, that, that match against Newcastle, it's gonna be we're, weird. We're, we're playing away at their place in September, that's going to be weird for us. It's going to be really emotional. Mm. Yeah. There are some Newcastle fans on social media that don't really understand how close we are to Eddie yeah. and how strange it's going to be I, you know, I'm going to have tears I, I swear it's going to be weird but felt like when we played your QPR a lot that was similar that first championship season I remember thinking it was weird playing against yeah. Harry yeah. yeah but you know do you think uh, how much of an improvement do you think they can show do you think well, they uh, could be pushing for Europe this, this season mm, or do you think it's maybe a little bit out of maybe a little bit early but I certainly don't see them being in a relegation scrap no. you know I think they'll finish half they could hope to see them finish ninth or tenth, something yeah. Yeah. around about eight, ninth, tenth. I think they just need to show that progression, don't they? And yeah. then they can. Eddie's Eddie's not stupid, is he? He's no. made some sensible business. He's not going to go out and go mad. No, they buy good players. Yeah, and, and just steadily, got, yeah, steadily come up. Yeah. Yeah, no, no they're, they're they're decent and got great support. Fifty-five thousand Geordies every week in their black and white striped shirts. You know, what I mean, it's a, it's a great atmosphere to go and play in. Yeah. Well, about, they did um, well last year. What about United, Ten Hag. What do you think? Well, again, it's it, bit unknown, isn't only. It? It'll only be as good as the players they bring in. If they don't make any good signings, they won't be any better. Ericsson looks like he's going to go that Ericsson's way. Yeah. a good signing. That's going to be a good signing. You know, for him. he's a good, good player for them. But they're still short with another. They're short in one. Sure, he's a good player, but will he stay fit? Yeah, that's the problem with them. I felt like in Ronaldo last yeah. season, it didn't, it, you know, it didn't quite fit. You know, the first the time at Man United it did. Um, I'm not saying. He felt like he was bigger than the club or anything, but I, I you know, sometimes it just you know doesn't quite work. Were they, were without, they him, without him, they'd have been the bottom six. True. Well, I agree. He was different agree. class. He was. Every goal, every time I watched Man United play, Ronaldo would score. He'd score. He'd score. He was take him out the team, and what did you have? He's you a know, machine, isn't he? People on about tracking, pressing. You know. What is, is Messi pressing? Was Messi pressing when he was at uh, Barcelona? You know. Is we all get carried away now. Every, it's you know, ain't all just about pressing and working. And it's about people that can do things and win games yeah. and do something special. And that's what he did last year. How many goals did he get? Twenty. Yeah, near, something like that. One, yeah. Twenty goals. Big goals as well. Big goals, winning yeah. games. Do you, think, the, do you think he was too good for the players around him? At, I don't at that know point? if he was too good. Do you know what? Sometimes and all, he's at he, the way he was. Such a professional. Don't drink. Eats yeah. the right food. Lives right. Some of those around him who think, you know, they had a few at Manchester United, yeah. you know, who want to be out, and he's probably saying, oh, he don't do it, you know, and they probably don't like it, really. Bit of friction, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know. No, I thought, I think he's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to have another year there. I don't know what he'll do, but... Yeah. Um, well, I agree, though. You have someone like Ronaldo. Don't worry about the press and stuff. You go, We've got Ronaldo. Let him do what he wants. He'll yeah. win us games. Win your games. Of course he will. Yeah, exactly. Is there anyone... It was West Ham last season. Well, they've done it for two seasons. They've been unbelievable, haven't they? David Moore's done a great job. Is there anyone you think can be that surprise team? Because I feel like West Ham have been that surprise team. I look at Brighton, for example. I think mm. Potter's a good manager. Mm. Who else is there? Kind of Leicester. Can they come back with Brendan? Is there anyone you but think? I, I think. But I think Brighton. They yeah. lost Burn. 
That was yeah, a massive true. loss. Yeah, that was a big I loss. I like Byrne. I think he's a proper good centre half. Yeah. Eddie made a great sign in there. Great. Um, I think Brighton will be okay again. Yeah. Southampton, you know. Yeah, Southampton's always a weird one. You always feel like they're going to have too much to go down, but then you always, they always have little runs where you worry mm, about I don't, I wouldn't bit. see them going down, but no. it's going to be tight at the bottom. They could be in a scrap. Down? Well, let's, let's, so we've got the Liverpool um, and Man City places confirmed, and then Chelsea. Che- Tottenham, Spur- Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. Um, Arsenal, Man United. West Ham. West and then Ham. West Ham, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. then after that, then we've got uh, like Newcastle, mid-table, Brighton. like, yeah, like you said, Brighton, mid-table, Newcastle, yeah. etc. Let's just, because what Villa. we do, Villa yeah. should be okay. Yeah, yeah, Villa should be okay. Yeah, who's in that? Who do you think, like from Bournemouth perspective, obviously our aim is yeah. to stay up, and same with the other two promoted clubs. Who's there? It's horrible to say, but who should we be looking to pull in with us? Are you looking at teams like Brentford, Brentford. maybe? Lost Ericsson? Absolutely Brentford. Leeds? Absolutely Brentford. I think Leeds, yeah, Leeds possibly. It might be all right. It yeah. depends now who goes and who stays. Difficult, team yeah. that scares me, and I'm desperate for him to do well. Desperate, because I love Frank. Yeah, of course. In their view, of course. but I've got a nasty feeling Everton are going to have a tough year. Yeah, is that is that just because they've lost Richarlison, haven't they? Yeah, got no money. Yeah, can't so bring any players. It, it, no money to spend. I thought last year they were poor. Yeah, it was took over a poor squad. Yeah, it's difficult for for Frank, isn't it? Because he can't really, like you say, he, he can't really bring in the players he no, wants. No, and to he's bring lost in. his main man. Yeah, it's the only pl- player that anyone really wanted to pay money for is yeah. gone. And then they're talking about the boy Golden going now. I know. Yeah. I mean, what, what a sad, what a terrible state to be in for a club like Everton. They've got to go and sell people like that. He's got to be looking. I know they're a, they're a historically a big club, but Frank's just got to keep them in the division for as long as he can till the finances allow him yeah. to do more, don't they? Do you think they'll just have enough? If you, if, you had to say, if you had to say three, Harry, who do you think? Oh. Is it, it going to be the three promoting clubs that you would fear? No, for I don't. No, I think not for us. They bought five. They bought six Spend players in. Money, yeah. If they've recruited well, I'm not sure who all the players are, but if they are decent players, it gives them a chance. Yeah. Recruitment is key. Of course. It's who you bring in. So players, you know, it's all about good players, really, getting the best out of them. But I don't know. It's going to be a scrap down there. But I do see Brentford. Yeah. Le- Leeds may be a possibility. Notts Forest, obviously, a possibility. Us and Fulham. Fulham, a possibility. Yeah. Bournemouth, a possibility. Everton, you know, they'd probably there be... Brighton may, I think Brighton should be right. Southampton could be in a scrap. Yeah. I'd see them being in the bottom eight. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tight down there. There's no really one tight. jumps out at me. I go, yeah, I think they'll go. I, I don't even want to think about Bournemouth going down. No, I, mean, I know. I'm desperate. Just want to see them stay up there this year. I mean, we're the eternal optimists. Yeah, yeah even we're mm. struggling to see us survive. Yeah, I think I think it's one of them. I think, like Harry said, you've got you've got a while yet till the yeah. window closes, and it's all about recruitment. One or two new signings. Yeah, um, and you, you get a little run together, and you pull a few in, like your Brentfords yeah. and Leeds. And, and it's a good place. This stadium is a big plus. Yeah, that home. You know, it's yeah. a great atmosphere. Small stadium, eleven thousand people in there. It's not what they're used to, is it? No, exactly. They're not used to that anymore, these Premier League players. It's like pff, the crowds on them, you know. Yeah. Brilliant. And yeah, so I'm hoping that the atmosphere will play in our, in our favour as well. But In terms of the mid table sides, then, looking at Brighton, Wolves, mm. Leicester. Yeah, should all be all right, Leicester shouldn't they? Should be all right, shouldn't yeah. they? Crystal Palace. Palace. Crystal Palace. Yeah, it's done all right, isn't it? I yeah, think. decent Palace. Mm. You know, but a couple of loans. The boy's gone back to Chelsea. Who was oh, yeah, Gallagher. Yeah. yeah, Gallagher, um, of course. And yeah, like you say, recruitment. But you know, they've got a couple that have come through. The boy Mitchell, the fullback, yep, the centre well. half they took from Chelsea, Way, yeah. done well. So I, I'd see them being okay yeah. again. Palace, they, they'd be, they'd be decent enough. I'd have thought, you know. Yeah, I think that's uh, fair. So, but it's going to be tight. Yeah. Will you be getting to games? Will you trying to go to all the Bournemouth games as much oh, yeah, as you can? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought season tickets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice one. Yeah, looking forward to it. And is it right that your grandson's on the books? At yeah. Ball, so he's I'm an apprentice. No, oh, nice. Harry, yeah. He's enjoying it? Yeah, he loves it, yeah. yeah. Got, a little, got a little chance, you know, same mm. as all of them. How many red naps can we keep at Bournemouth? Every, <laughs> yeah, every yeah, generation. Right. <laughs> if he keeps, you know, if he works hard enough, he's got, you know, like all the kids, they've all got a chance. It's up to them how much they want to do it, innit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so what's on the agenda for you then? Uh, this year, you, I expect you've got a load of uh, media commitments and stuff. What's going on for um, you? Busy, yeah. I've been doing a great TV programme with Jamie and Jack Whitehall. I mean, it's been so much fun. I mean, it starts out, Jack challenges Jamie that they're having dinner, and then Jack said, oh, you think you know every, they have a bit of an art. You think you know everybody. He said, I bet you can't get 11 World Cup legends to have a picture with you. 
a selfie right. and get this football sign. Jack's got an old leather ball. So he said, you've got 11 days to do it and the loser had to have dinner with Jack's dad, which was the forfeit, you know? <laughs> nice, nice. He's good so, at that, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, so off we go. Jamie comes, to, rings, Dad, I need your help. What's the matter? I need to see you. Then he comes to my house to film it, you know, it's all being yeah. fit. He comes in, right, we get a blackboard out. Right, Dad, let's, who can, where can we go? Where can we get 11 world goalkeepers? Buffon, uh, Chilton, uh, yeah. that we get all names out. Who can we? Full backs, you know, and we go for a big list of them. Right, where are we going? Where are we? And then off we go. Now we to we go it. to Italy. We That's meet Pirlo. Right, we go and meet Pirlo for the day. Meet him in Milan. He's also while we're there, he's arranged his restaurant where he goes all the time. That belongs to his friends. And the lady there is going to show me and Jamie how to make pasta. So and we're going to cook his dinner when he That's arrives. Great. So we sit out. And, fantastic. They were sitting out. He's, he was lovely, you know. Uh, we're chatting away. I said, what about the day you saw that penalty against England? When he, oh, I've checked. Yeah. Right, and he'd come up. If they'd have lost, he was out, Italy, and he's come up and give it a little... Ch- he was class, I mean. You know, I said, surely, where would... Nah, you know, I felt confident. I knew, <laughs> I, you know, he's, I, I knew the goalkeeper always dived, so I just... Yeah. But No, it was brilliant. Then we go and get Carlos, uh, Roberto Carlos. Oh, great. Um, again, we go to... He's, he lives in Madrid, so he's got, he goes to the same restaurant every day. So me and Jamie are turning up. He's got this corner, Roberto Carlos corner. In the restaurant, you'd love it. If ever you go to Madrid, I'll give you the address. Yeah. Is a thousand pictures of everybody who's ever played for Real Madrid in, been in this restaurant. I don't care who they are. They've, every one of his pictures, every, thousands of pictures. The man's Real Madrid crazy. And he has a table in the corner every day for lunch. Don't pay. The boss, the owner of the restaurant just loves him, you know. Of course. And he sits in this big corner. So we're coming in to see him. We've got the football under our arms. We walk into the restaurant, the, the owner's here. He, he's like, he's in on it, obviously. Yes, sir, yes, uh, you have a reservation? No, no, we haven't got a reservation. We come to see Roberto Carlos. What do you mean? We come to, we, we, we want to see him. No, 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 you have, don't have, sorry, no autograph hunters. Go away, go away, <laughs> please, thank you. Oh, but please, go, go. Throws us out. Like, I'm outside, oh my God, Jamie, we've come all this way. <laughs> we go walk round the back and then we see him in the restaurant. We climb over some dustbins, come oh, through great. the tradesman's entrance. Anyway, and we sit and have a chat with him for half hours. But it was, that's, that was the shit we'd done him. We, then we were, we've been all over the place getting different oh, people. Good, yeah. Jack, Jack and Jamie are really good together. Yeah, well, aren't they? so we've, really had, we've had good fun, you know. Then we're, we're going to uh, PSG uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going to see if we can get messy and... Nice. But we're going to wow. get a cold shoulder and all. Well, I think Messi's going to tell us to piss off. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's the it. can't all keep going smoothly. Yeah, know? exactly. Oh, oh, that's that's good. Good. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, yeah, it's and good. Um, yeah. obviously the World Cup in December. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. I think England yeah. got a chance. I mean, our last, our last game won, won great watching, was it? Got a good squad of players. Yeah. Fantastic young players. He's done well to keep her. I know he's not, probably won't start, but he's done though. well. Yeah, brilliant. Hey, I think when he's, they sold him, Bournemouth, I thought they thought they did very well getting that money for him, didn't they? Well, yeah. we bought him for just over a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Million. It, was, it, was, it was a great deal. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah. But I thought they, they thought Christmas had come yeah, yeah. when they yeah, got yeah, that amount of money yeah. for him. Mm. I know that for a fact. You know, one yeah. But he's turned out. He's. I mean, it was a great deal from Bournemouth's point of view for Bournemouth, but. It, it turned out to be a great sign at Arsenal, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm, he went yeah. to Sheffield United, back to... But yeah, he's done amazing. Modern day keeper. What yeah. do you think of Southgate? Is he, is he the man to lead us to glory in the last well, game? one else, is it, really? Last game wasn't great, though, no. was it? That 4-0 hit yeah, I think he needs to... We need a bit more. I think he needs to take the handbrake off a bit, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah you I know think that's I mean, oh, Grealish can play. Get, you'd, if, he, if Grealish played in any other country, he'd be, he'd be the team would be built around him. They'd just let him do what he'd you want. He'd be yeah. the player, wouldn't he? Yeah, Greedish, right. give it to Greedish, Grey, Jack, and you'd put, fit him in there just to play and make something happen, win a game. You know, he don't like Greedish. He picks Greedish out of sufferance. I think yeah. he brings him on late. And uh, I think we should have won the Euros. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Should have won happen. the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. we get beat by Croatia. We had the best draw you've ever seen. Yeah. You've never seen a draw like it. We played every rubbish team that we could have found. <laughs> Uh, Colombia, was it Colombia? Did Sweden, we play? Colombia, yeah. Sweden. Colombia, yeah. Sweden. They were just all bang average teams. Yeah. And then we end up playing an old, old Finnish Croatian team who have got really Modric, the rest of them all on the way down, yeah. Rakitic, all getting older. And we couldn't, we couldn't beat them. It was yeah. a massive disappointment. 
But no, listen, we've got good players. I, I wouldn't replace Gareth with anyone. There's no one around that jumps out at me. I mean, eventually, years to come, there'll be people like Eddie Howe, yeah. Stevie Gerrard, yeah. maybe, you know, people like that will be pushing for that job. But right day. now, like you say. But right, right now, now think, yeah. you know, no, I, I'm hoping he does well. He's a nice guy, Gareth. Yeah. And um, he's got some good players and hopefully we can we can have a real go at it this year. Well, we've created our, our tier list then yeah. and you know we're relatively we're relatively happy with it. So if you were gonna say that just to you know put your neck on the line, if you had to pick three sides that you think could be in trouble, we're gonna put Bournemouth in one of in, in one of those spots. <laughs> just we? to be unbiased. You, yeah, just to be unbiased. Yeah. I'm not sitting here saying they're gonna stack their, their no. search to stay no. up. I mean I, you know, I really don't. But I just hope they do. Desperate for them to stay up. I think Brentford. Brentford, if I Fulham. Pick a team to come get sucked in. Yeah, Brentford, Fulham. Yeah, Brentford. yeah, I think that's fair. I, I could see them two getting sucked. Them two being. Yeah. I certainly think Brentford. No Ericsson this year. Yeah, yeah I've been saying. You know, Tony season, started yeah. like a house on fire. Now his second year, people know him. Yeah. Can he Similar with Sheffield United, wasn't to it? To be fair, yeah. Bournemouth would be, should have beat Brentford the year they came yeah, up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, that, that, how about that guy? Them oh. two games. How did they not win them? Uh, you know, we go, game, we go it? there and go one up. Yeah. Now we're two nil up, and then Ten we men, get a penalty, it? a sending mm. off, everything yeah. that could have gone wrong. All that went day. against us, yeah. Uh, but and they roughly the same team the following year, Brentford. Yeah. So no, I think Brentford could be a team that, you know, I don't want to think about Bournemouth going no. down. I think they'd. Do. I like it. I think they'll just about. We like we like yeah. that from you. I think we like that from you, Harry. You're right. Yeah. Right. right well. Thank you so much yeah, for joining us, it. Harry. It's been a pleasure, lads. Really appreciate nice it. We know you're busy. We, yeah, so we really know you're busy, appreciate so we appreciate you. time. And uh, yeah, yeah, all the best for the upcoming season. Good. Now I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait for the first game. Aston Villa at home, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Good, good game Villa to start. Yeah, Gerard coming down. Yeah, yeah I love Stevie Gerard. I think he, when I listen to him on TV, I think he's... I think he's got going to be good in the yeah, game, going to do yeah, really well. Yeah, he's a great lad. Great lad. Good lad. Good, what a player he was. But Scotty Parker was a great player as well. You've got him, Parker and Lampard all managing yeah. Yeah. that midfield. They, they must have played as like a midfield three before for England. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's cool to see. I do like it, yeah. Right. So let's, uh, well done, lads. So myself and Tom, now we're going to organise this tier list for you. <laughs> yeah, so let's bring it up on screen then. Look, we appreciate that mm. Harry sometimes doesn't want to pin his colours on the mast too much. No, which I appreciate, yeah. So we, he's given us a rough guide and we are now going to finish off the tier list, but not only are we gonna put it in tiers, we're gonna order it as yeah. well, mate. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so are we gonna do it from top to bottom? Yeah, let's do top to bottom. All right, bottom. so yeah. firstly then, I think Man City. Yeah, I agree with what he was saying, Man City. Do look too strong, don't they? So I'm gonna go Man City. Yeah, uh, and number. then and then Liverpool. I know they lo yeah. they've lost Mane, but they've strengthened as well. Yeah, and, and I think kind they're of, always gonna be strong. Yeah, kind of what Harry was saying. He, he thinks Spurs, with the business they've done, could maybe push Liverpool, mm. but Liverpool still will have that edge. So yeah, happy to go Liverpool at number two. And then in um, he said that Spurs are yeah. going to be you know pushing. So we've got them in third, and Chelsea also you know, looking. So that's the Champions League sorted. Yeah. After that, you've got your Europa spots, but also. Conference, conference as well and I can't see much of a chat I think Arsenal and Man United are going to be there and that's what Harry alluded to as well yeah yeah he's gone yeah pretty similar to last season as he was kind of saying it all depends on recruitment before then but at the moment you've if you've got to make a prediction you're going to say Arsenal man you should be strong enough to do that and then yeah that conference league he tipped West Ham to do it again mm. which would be interesting I mean don't get me wrong I've been I was writing them off the last two seasons thinking they're going to struggle at some point mm. but you know I get what you're saying they've been they've been great and they've got people like Declan Rice in there so yeah, he's gone then to get in that last spot again, hasn't he? We were thinking that he, he might put Newcastle there, but it was mm. quite clear when we asked him, he was like, oh, I think it's going to be a bit of a stretch. And look, I think a top 10 finish for Newcastle would be all right. And look, we've got our, our mid-table slots there, yeah. uh, and Newcastle are going to be at the top of it, mate. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think uh, they'll be looking to make that push. But as Harry said, and I probably agree, it's, they're going... Look at you. They get, you haven't even had a beer, did they? Um, they're going off that... It's going to be a progression, isn't it? It's going to be slow and steady with Eddie. Mm. All right. <laughs> Didn't mean to. But yeah, so I think eighth, if they show that progression, then they, they know they can keep strengthening if they need to. So I think that's fair. So our mid-table slots are between eighth and thirteenth. So ninth, I mean, we've got, uh, you know, the mid-table sides that we've mentioned, Leicester, Villa, Palace, Wolves, Brighton. Yeah. Um, are we going to put Leicester in ninth? Yeah, I'd say so. I think um, Harry kind of quickly said about Leicester and Villa 
will be absent. They'll probably be the next two after Newcastle. So I think Leicester just above Villa in ninth and tenth. Yeah. Okay. And then Brighton Wolves Palace. Uh, mm. It's a really tough one with them three, isn't it? You know, Brighton seemingly are just uh, you know they we're not putting them in in any relegation scrap. They're going to be all right. I think they're too, still too strong. I think Graham Potter's a good young manager. Um, Harry alluded to the fact they lost Dan Byrne last season, which I think is fair. But they also lost Ben White the season before, and they keep. I just like him as a manager, so I think they'll be fine. But I'll probably tip Palace and Wolves maybe first and just above them. So what are we going to go? Palace, Wolves, then Brighton? Yeah, yeah, I like that. There we go. All right then. So. We've got seven teams left. Harry wasn't being drawn into it, but we got a little gauge at the end yeah. of the three teams that might be struggling. But look, we've got we've got Fulham, we've got Bournemouth, we've got Forest, Leeds, Southampton, Everton, Brentford. Um, should we start with, yeah, the relegation scrap, but they'll be okay. Annoyingly, I think the top ones of that is going to be Southampton. You, you think they'll be all right? I think they'll be all right. And, um, yeah, I think Harry kind of said he thinks they'll, they'll probably have too much. They always seem to, don't they? they always, at the start of every season, you go, oh, I'm not sure about Southampton. They always mm. seem to do enough. So, yeah, I'm happy to put Southampton at the top of that. He also mentioned, obviously, his nephew mm. Lampard is uh, at Everton. He said, you know, they're going to struggle. They'll be OK, but, but he's worried just about OK. Yeah, he was talking to us saying he, he is worried about them, lost their best player. Um, he thinks Frank's got a tough job. But Are we going to put them just above the breadline then? Yeah, I would say they just have enough. OK. Um, and then there's two in the sandwich in the middle of them, of Southampton and Everton. I think if we're going off, you know, the chat with Harry, I think he's very convinced that Forrest would be all right, isn't he? OK, so there's one more spot left. If this ain't Bournemouth, this means we're going down, mate. I think we've... I th I'm... I'd rather say that we are and then we surprise people. OK, I yeah. think at this moment in time, we've signed two free agents. Yeah, and look, these, th these thoughts can change. You know, when we signed Gareth Bale and whoever else... Mm, of course then maybe that'll change. But what, which, who, which team are you going for? Forest and Leeds. Yeah, so, Leeds. I think Leeds will just have enough. Uh, so yeah, I would say Southampton, then Forest, Leeds, Everton. And then we're unfortunately going to... I'm happy to put us in there. Harry Collar went with two mm. and said I can't quite say Bournemouth, which I respect because I, I struggle too. But we'll just put Bournemouth in there. But he definitely alludes to the fact that he thinks Fulham and Brentford are going to struggle, didn't he? Yeah. Especially Brentford, which I, I've kind of fought for a long time as well. I think Ericsson leaving is such a... Such a blow for Brentford. Second season syndrome. So we're going to go in what order? So Bournemouth, 18th? Bournemouth, Fulham, Brentford, yeah. Hello, Fulham fans. Oh, but we're with you, we're with you. Yeah. Right? But we're going to finish just above because Solanke's going to get that. What, you know, a few more goals than your Mitrovic. Yeah. I think they've got Mitrovic, haven't they? There you go. There is our tier list inspired by a manager of four Premier League sides. Well, current Premier League sides. Bournemouth, yeah. West Ham, Tottenham. Southampton. Yeah. yeah. Southampton loved him as well, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely loved him. There you go. What do you think about Harry Redknapp's tier list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know. Tom? Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure. It has, mate. It has. Really enjoyed it. Harry was great, wasn't he? Yeah. Such a top guy. So, yeah, really enjoyed doing it. In Lazy Jack's, a bit different. Yeah. Get down to Lazy Jack's. Yeah, uh, really the nice. link's at the bottom in the description. So, make sure you check it out. Their website's got all the information you need to know. But until the next video, of the cherries. Up, cheers.